Hey everyone, welcome back to Seriously Podcast. I'm Mary. I'm Brittany. And this week, guys, we are continuing with Harlem. We're going to be doing episodes five and six. Yes, and our guest this week, we wanted to bring someone that is just as much of a TV enthusiast, a web series, a junkie, just like us. We have our boy Phil Hernandez with us. Welcome. Hey. Welcome back, first of all. Yes, yes it's been a while. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. <laughs> How have you been? I've been good. I've been good. How have, how have you ladies been doing? We've been good. Good. Yes. Good. Good. Nice. So, the last time we had you on, we talked about Tough Love. Yes. So, what had, and that was a while ago. We did what, season two? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was season two of Tough Love. Yeah, so right? yeah, it was. Yeah. What have you been up to? You know, Phil is an entertainment enthusiast. What's been going on? What's new with you? Um, so I'm still doing some entertainment writing. I've been freelancing for VPN Magazine. I've done interviews for their magazine, and I'm just doing articles for their for the digital website that they just launched um, a few weeks ago. Uh, and I'm doing that. And doing some other stuff in the mix. Uh, there's some there's some things coming out in the mix. Uh, I don't want to say yet, but you know, until everything's official, but okay. it's coming out soon. We're so, picking yeah. up some things. I love to hear it. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> Gee, we love to hear it. Just a little bit. <laughs> so you know, we're talking about Harlem. Tell us your thoughts. Who's your favorite um, Harlemette, if you will? <laughs> Harlemette. Uh, I like Harlem. I think it's great. Um, I think it's a good substitute for, you know, because everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people who love Sex in the City, they love that for some TV shows yeah. and stuff. Um, and I think it's a good, not a substitute, but it's a good, it's, it's something else to look forward to. Yeah. Um, I think it's great. Uh, I think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. Um, the acting is great. My favorite out of all of them uh, is gosh I'd say Angie Angie Angie's my favorite but the character who I most relate to is probably Quinn Quinn (laughs) that's me all day overthink that's me but my favorite is Angie okay (laughs) Angie's fun she is fun she is fun yeah she's funny now Yes. So you relate to Quinn. So you tell me you're going to ride the train to Long Island. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. Leaving your phone. No, 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 no. Uh, No. But as far as like the way she overthinks everything um, and just the way she's a hopeless romantic but still can't find a good relationship, that's me. That's me all day. (laughs) It sucks, but it's hard out here. Can we talk about it? It's hard. <laughs> and that's that's hard of, out here. Yes, and mm-hmm. that's one of the things about this show. Like I always say, it's very relatable. Like the dating yes. school is slim. Very slim. Slim pickings out here. Yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Especially as you get older. Yeah. You Especially when you get older. These mm-hmm. things are more established more mature but it's like mm, crazy it's, yes <laughs> it's a struggle it is and then you have people like camille who had the great guy but you know she made the choice to let him go and yeah. she we see that she's regretting it right now what do you feel about camille and ian um camille and ian i think they're they're super interesting. Um, I feel like, I mean, I think we won't know exactly why they are at this place until we see, because they've talked about it, she's talked about it, he's talked about it, but I know there's an episode coming up where they, where they show everything, and I think that's when it's gonna be, it's gonna make sense just a little bit. So, I, I don't know. I think I just have mixed feelings of. About them just because I feel like I don't know why she didn't go with him to Paris, and mm. I need to know why to to be like, okay, well, you're dumb or you're not. So I'm gonna go with dumb. 
but I'm just gonna stick with that. You're gonna stick with that. <laughs> You're gonna say she's dumb and not going to Paris yeah. with him? Because it's been four years and this man is living rent free in her mind. It's like, yeah. And he's living his life. Like, he right. got his career, did what he had to do, found a fiance. Right, like, but you're the one that let him go. So it's like, what do you expect? Yeah, exactly. You know? And he wouldn't He wouldn't have met that fiance if she had gone with him. Yes. But I wouldn't, I would, <laughs> like, it would be nice if she went with him, but then she wouldn't have her career at Columbia, which is still, like, an amazing thing. But they could have did the long distance thing. Yeah. True. But... I mean, I know we'll get into it, but I know there's a scene in this episode where she, where she tells Jameson, "You're gonna be leaving soon." So I don't know if she's into long distance, but yeah, you know, yeah, that could mm. be a reason why. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's let's get into episode five. Uh, so episode five is titled "Boundaries." Mm-hmm. Um. We're going to do it from least drama to the most drama. Like, whoever is giving us the most. Because we know we live for drama. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) episode five, nothing really happened with Angie. Besides, she she wasn't filling her paycheck from Get Out. And she has to keep this nanny job. Yeah. That's it. We also learned that she's from Staten Island, which it made sense. It made sense to me. Definitely. Definitely makes sense. Because yeah. we kept saying, no. these girls are not from New York. It's Staten Island. Although it was here in New York. We don't claim Staten Island. Acknowledge it. So <laughs> what is that? I'm taking what a boat that? to get to you? What are, what's going on? No. <laughs> no. I'm so done. I can't. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Andy, yeah. she was just more of a supportive friend in this episode. Very yeah. much so. Yeah. Um, so, so let's go to Ty. Mm-hmm. So um, this woman that she's been dating, we had her name wrong. Yeah. Stephen Colfield Jr. had her name wrong. <laughs> what did he say? Emily, right? No, he said Lauren. He said Emily. Oh, yeah. Anna. The name is Anna. Anna. <laughs> and he was like, on his phone. What is going on? I don't know what he looked up then because that's... You went to your phone. You went to a source. He's like, yeah, Emily, um, Lauren. What? Yeah. He said it was so much confidence. No, it's, it's Anna. Anna. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're feeling each other and they're calling themselves a couple already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're, we're like 24 hours in. And <laughs> Crystal from The Read has always said lesbians fall, as, fall in love hella quick. Like, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, heard I've heard it. <laughs> I've heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh. although you know she kinda she's very happy with Anna. She feels like walking the streets with her is it's just not safe. She, <laughs> she can't do it. No. Because even another lesbian couple walks by and uh you know, the black they're black women, they look at mm-hmm. Ty kinda like, Oh, that's what we're doing? Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And that freaks her out. Freaks her out. Freaks her out. <laughs> mind you, she was supposed to bring Anna to meet Angie. Like, they was really about to be a whole thing. And she right. said, you know what? I'm tired. Now you're tired? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm tired of walking with you. Yeah. <laughs> she can take the pressure. <laughs> yeah, she immediately gets cold um, to her, and but Anna at first she doesn't see anything about it. She's like, okay, well, mm-hmm. we'll do something else. We'll talk to, talk to you mm-hmm. later. Um, and it kind of got her thinking. She meets up with Angie. I thought I could handle it, but the way people looked at us and what kind of message am I sending to the world? Hi, I'm Ty, and I created an app so that queer people of color can meet and fall in love. But here's my white wife and our mixed kids. Am I like a baby labradoodle? <laughs> Ty, I bumped the brakes. You think I should break up with her? You do. You think I should break up with her? You're bugging. And Angie, like, kind of told, like, it's not about what I think or what anyone thinks. What do you want to do? Like, love is love. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, but she ends up breaking up with her anyway. She was just like, I can't take the (laughs) pressure. Me being a successful black woman, 
that created a product for black people and, and uh, people of color and I have a white girlfriend. It's not going to work. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the math isn't mathing, so I can't. <laughs> I can't. You are not supposed to be in this equation. I'm At so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to uh, divide you out. Take you out. Once you packed you, mm-hmm. you out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Anna's like, listen, like she she admits she understands what she's saying. Like I have blind spots. I don't, may not yes. um, had that same fight as you, but mm-hmm. um, I'm not a sellout, and you're a coward. Um, yeah, he tipped on her. Shots fired. Yeah. Do y'all think she was a coward for breaking up with Anna? Because she should have saw it through. Oh, um. Mary's going with coward. <laughs> <laughs> No, Mary's I, not coward. <laughs> Mary's no <laughs> so Mary's like, she's not sure. I, I think she might be a little bit of a coward. I get what she's saying. I mean, you make mm-hmm. an app for mm-hmm. queer people of color. I get it. She's mm-hmm. like, oh my God, they're going to think I'm a sellout. But it's also, I agree with Angie. Love is love. Do what you want. And... Obviously, you didn't really care too much that she was white because you were filling her up, down, left, and right. Hello. But, you know, I think she's a sellout. I give Anna all the props. Okay. Call her coward. I would have called her a little bit more words, but that's just me. Okay. (laughs) Especially, like, if you're going to feel that way, feel that way from the beginning. Don't string me and go out with me and then switch up. Like, what? What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because she she feels ashamed because she's judged other people, right. especially yeah. black men, for doing mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So she does not want that to fall on her too. And it's like, yeah, you are a coward because you're letting other people's opinions um, dictate your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. With, with her and Anna, it kind of just happened. Whereas, like, a lot of black men don't date black women because of, and Angie said it too, because, oh, their attitude, they're too loud. They don't, mm-hmm. like, they kind of put black women down to date the mm-hmm. other race. And that's not what, you know, Ty's doing. Yeah, that's definitely not what she's, what she's doing. But I definitely, I've heard that, I've seen that, especially in, in movies and, like, in life. I've seen that, I've seen that happen, um, but I just think Ty went about it the wrong way. I mean, Come on. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's 2020. Let's, or, 2022. Sorry. So let's go over to Camille. The last <laughs> episode, you know, she was shocked of her findings with Jamison's um, laptop. Mm-hmm. Turned out he did some research and found out everything to impress her, to give her the perfect date, to find out everything about her. And it freaked her out because, like, okay, you're a stalker. Yeah. Um, and she feels manipulated. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Like, it was a very thin line. Like, it could have been cute. Like, okay, you really want to know me? But just, that's what the date Speak is for. Me. Yeah. If you want to get to know me, talk to me. Don't do this creepy stuff right, right. here. Because that's not cute. I agree. Yeah. That was very scary. I would have been like, where's the rope? Where's the tape? Where's the exit? Where's the exit? <laughs> where's the exit? <laughs> where's the exit? And then we have told you to plan, but not like this. Not this like not- this. Y'all are taking planning to the to the top level. We just need you right here. <laughs> just right here. What pissed me off is that he was shocked and making jokes about, like, if I wanted to kill you, I could have. This is why women be scared of men is because they make jokes like this, yeah. thinking that we're going to laugh with them. No. And it's like, no, I don't feel safe around you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Cause that's gonna stay in my mind. Like, oh, he he made a joke about that. Like, I'm I'm scared. He, I'm he scared. joked about my life ending. Absolutely not. <laughs> so she, Camille's arguing with him, and in my mind, I'm like, do this later. You're late. You're late. Very You're late. late. <laughs> You're already Very late. four hours late to a meeting with us. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. We don't have time for this. Mm-hmm. Lock him or do whatever you need to do, but you have to go. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but doctor she meets up with Dr. Pruitt and again not impressed, not enthused, doesn't care you missed your meeting um, you um, I'm disappointed yet again 
Yeah. But now you're demoted. Okay. First of all, you're coming <laughs> the same outfit you had on last night. At your big age, you know better than this. Yep, an outfit with multiple drinking, zippers. <laughs> you had sex, therefore you have a scent on you. How dare you come into my face with your apollo lies and your excuses? <laughs> apollo lies. How dare you? What do you think this is? <laughs> How dare you? You're already late. Go home and shower, change your clothes. You're already late. You are yeah. I love you. Nobody want to smell you. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. No. Like, you're too old. My love life to prove it does not give her any special treatment. Like, I'm not doing this with you. Right. I don't care what why you're late. Like, go wash your behind. How do you? <laughs> you're a professor. Like, where's the professionalism? Oh my god, yep. This you can't even see dress like this? What are you doing? Rip her apart. Oh, uh, Camille. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Camille, so runs, Camille runs to Ian's mom, and mm -hmm. she's like, Ian's not going to be there. I need you there. We have a strong connection. It'll be weird without you. It'll be weird without you there. Lady, if it's one, why, if that's the case, why am I just not getting an invite? Exactly. Well, so, what that? She's been like dodging her calls. She hasn't been dodging her calls. Yeah, something like that. Like she don't come by her. Don't come by the. They have. They both go to like the same boutique, and she hasn't been there. Yeah, I don't know about. Uh, yeah, but she's dodging That's her on nice. purpose. Okay, right, right. But even so, she wants her there. Um, and she believed this. This is how I knew she's. How are you, a professor? How? How? <laughs> how? What excuse does Ian have for not going to his own mother's retirement party? I was about to say, why wouldn't he be there? The restaurant's not open yet. So what excuses does he have? There's no excuse. Yep. Do you honestly believe that he's not going to be there? To send his mother Ooh. off? Like, he's cooking the food. You know this. Yeah. <laughs> you fool. You are fool. You fool. <laughs> you wanted to see him. That's why you went. Yes. So they go, you know, Quinn goes with her for some, you know, moral support. It's mm -hmm. awkward as soon as Ian opens the door. Opens the door. They're questioning if they, if, if they even should go in. Like, it's just a mess. Um, you too cool for this. Come very out. awkward. Yeah. And so the mom ain't slick. I feel like she knew what she was doing. Of course she knew what she was doing. Of course she knew. Come on, his plans changed? Okay, like Ian was ever going to miss his mom's party. She knew he was going to be here. You think so? Of course. This is totally a setup. Yeah, but why? Because she's probably hoping that you and him will still get back together. No. Why are you asking these stupid ass questions? <laughs> why are you doing this? Yeah. Camille does of not course she think. Oh, God. She yes. upsets me. <laughs> So Ian's aunt Tammy's like reading him like about you know Ray's you know put, like this is horrible. So Camille's mm -hmm. like, let me come to the rescue. Pick a side. <laughs> you even want to protest against him? You want to fight his family for what him? What do you want to do? What are you? What are we doing? Like it's, it's not his fault, but last week it was his fault. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's happening here? But um. Mm -hmm. They connect again, and the vibe is back. They go down memory lane a little bit, and they tell each other that they're really proud of each other. He invites mm -hmm. her to the, you know, the opening night. Like they're back on good terms. And um, the moms, like everybody, gather around. I um, want to let you know that this is my new daughter, and my son will be moving into the brownstone. Mm. You just want to take that. She just taking that knife and just twisting it. Yeah, because that that would have been her. Yeah, that was her dream. She was telling Quinn earlier. And her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is her, her fairy tale. Oh, oh well. well. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. The mom is messy for this, though. All fairy tales I mean, come to an end. You did break up with my son. So, what you thought? <laughs> right? That's true. That's what did true. you think? Mm hmm. So, she's giving Jameson another shot because. Um, she can't have what she really wants, so she's just gonna settle for the next best thing. Yeah. And that's a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a stalker. Because Mira, really <laughs> right. Mira said something that was like, I guess, eye opening. Because she said that um, 
Ian wasn't her typical guy. Like, he had so many red flags, but she took a chance on love, and look at her now. <laughs> so Camille's like, let me do that. They're such an odd couple. Very <laughs> odd. Very odd. They make no sense together. No. <laughs> I could do without Mira. Yeah, he's giving me I'm settling for this woman. He, well, he is. Yeah, just because he met her in Paris. Yeah. That's okay. true. Um, so let's go to Quinn. She wakes up to breakfast in bed. And let me tell you something about Sean. Full service. He's a full service kind of guy. Absolutely. Full Five stars. Service. Five stars. Five Let him star breakfast. service. Five star service. Yelp reviews are just amazing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ugh. Yes, up I love it. Um, he really likes her, but she's trying to make it clear that, you know, this is a one night stand. Yep. Mm-hmm. At the same time, breakfast is the most important meal, so she cannot just let the food just stay there. I can't do no, that. I can't do that. It's bacon. It's bacon. It's bacon. It was a full plate. Like, I'm eating it. I mean, I have to eat. I have huh. to eat. <laughs> I have to eat. I mean, please. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it turns out he's actually his daddy, and, you know, although she likes him, she enjoys him, she's just like, I have a no-kid policy, like, no baby mama drama over here. Mm-hmm. 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 And I, I totally get it, because I'm definitely like that as well, like, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. I, I think as I've gotten older, I would be more accepting of it, mm-hmm. but I have like I guess limits or rules like I'm not going to date you if your baby was born this morning like handle that <laughs> handle that um, and then baby mama drama you don't want that either so if the, if the relationship is happy you know healthy and I just feel like as we get older it's a little bit harder finding men without kids nowadays it's not impossible though yeah, it's very impossible. big of you Brittany you know um, it's growth, maturity. Yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not as responsible, so I, yeah. I'm with you, Phil. Good up to you, because I'd be like a kid. Mm. Mm-mm. No, I'm good. Mm-mm. I'm good. Mm-mm. Can't do it. I get it though. I get it. I definitely get it. It's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> um. So she has it in her mind that you know she's never gonna see him again, but. She forgot her grandmother's necklace at his apartment, so she has to see him. She tells him to um, arrive at Ian's mother's retirement party so she can get her necklace back. Mm -hmm. And he just walks in people's house. Like, he just got very (laughs) comfortable. (laughs) Well, he said I texted her four times. Right. He did. (laughs) Does that mean you walk in people's house? I was waiting on the curb. (laughs) (laughs) True, yeah. He got I'm real comfortable good. real quick. Comfy. <laughs> you been eating mom's like, okay, get you get yourself a plate. Like you know, right at home. Yep. No one leaves my house unfed, is okay. what she said. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. <laughs> but it sounds like my mom. She would do that. <laughs> That's my family. My whole family like that too. Yeah, my <laughs> Uh but Quinn, she wasn't happy about this. But at the end of the day, we learned that he's just a good listener. And, you know, she likes to vent about fabric and about running a business. And he just, he just let her. Like, yeah. he yeah. listened to her. Mm-hmm. Oh, he loves well, he's it. He's just, like, taking off boxes right he's, there. He's the guy. <laughs> he's he, this man's a full-service guy. Yes. Uh, Five stars. Five yes. stars. Yes. He even In got every way home. possible. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He was chatting it up with Ian's fiance and... She's socially conscious, so he convinces her to hire Quinn to design her wedding dress. And Sis was talking about five figures. Five so, figures. Five figures. Let's discuss. Yeah. Real Please. healthy to me. It sounds good. I mean, obviously, we'll put a pin in this. But the money was money in. The mm-hmm. money was money, money in. Okay, let's and put pin. And support, I love points go to him. The support, like, let me get you. Yeah, the support is. Yeah. 
full like this is the type of energy. Right. Tell us, take a Sean. listen. Look at Sean. This is who you want to be. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I want yeah, I want to show. <laughs> okay. We need so, Sean. Yes. So the girls have their weekly TV night, mm-hmm. and um. Quinn tells the girl, you know, Sean is coming over and Angie decides, okay, this is a perfect time to, that's perfect. You need to keep him around after he gave you that deal. Mind you, at this point, Camille, Quinn and Camille have not spoke about this. So this is news to Camille. Yeah. Yes, because this happened last night. It's only been yeah. four hours. Yeah. So she hasn't had a chance to talk to her. Right. right. And this is a big thing. Like, I'm not going to do it at the party. I probably won't right. do it in person. Like, give me a minute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Camille is pissed. Like, how are you working with my ex fiance? And then Ty kind of backs her up. Like, that's messy. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, because I never even would have needed this check if you hadn't been so damn stingy with your contacts. Bitch, no. Don't blame your shit on me. I wasn't being stingy. It's called being smart. Why would I mix friends and money so I can end up having somebody living off me like Angie does you? Do not bring me into this. It is not my fault that Quinn is being a shady friend to Camille. What? And mind you, we didn't talk about that earlier. I felt that was going to happen because when um, Ty offered, like, suggest that she could, should get an investor, Quinn was mm-hmm. like, oh, let me know. Let me, and um, Ty was like, we'll see about that. And I was like, she ain't giving her nothing. She ain't giving that her was shady of her. Yeah, that was shady. That was very shady. But I understood her point about mixing business with friends because it gets messy. It gets, um, it gets crazy. Like when money's involved and friends involved, business involved, you don't want to mix those two worlds. So I get that, but she should have said that to Quinn. Like mm-hmm. I can't really share my contacts, but here is the best way to go about it. Agree. I would have done that. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So everyone is getting hit. And Angie, she kind of made me mad. Like, she was just so delusional. She's like, why is everybody so dramatic? Like, you're going to set the match and then just walk away? Yeah, she lives in the world. Yeah, she was doing too much. Like, you started this drama. Right. And you're not an idiot. You know exactly what you're doing. Exactly. Come on now. I agree. But I think the big question is, with, with I want to hear all your answers. Is it wrong of Quinn? to work with, what's her name? Maisha? Mira. Maisha. I mean, Mira, sorry, Mira. I like Maisha. With, I like Maisha. With Mira, is it wrong? I personally didn't think it was wrong mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, nobody pays my bills besides my mom and me. Okay, okay, oh, yeah, okay. And I feel like, <laughs> Quinn knows, knows how to um, keep it professional. Like, I don't see her trying to be Mira's friend or anything like yeah. that. Like, this is just a paycheck at the end of the day. As that. 100%, okay. 100% agree. Like, it would be different if Mira was on some, well, let's go get tea. Let's talk. Oh, yes. I, I really want to. No, we're not doing that. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. It's business, and then Camille should understand that. Like, you, I'm about to shut down. Like, I have right. been like, I thought that was so selfish of her to be like, I expected you to say no. Right. Why on earth would I do that? Yeah. Like, I, 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 do, I do feel like Quinn should have told, told her that you. night. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. I think she plans to. She said she did, but Angie want to be messy, messy boots over there. Mm-hmm. And open her big mouth. Yeah. I think it's the way it she found out about it that really made her mad too. Yeah, yeah I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I don't think she was wrong. No, I don't think so too. Mm-hmm. So let's get into episode six. Cuffin season. Cuffin season was a great time. Mm-hmm. How's y'all how was y'all cuffin season? Lonely. Hashtag lonely. Don't exist. Don't, don't exist. Never. The bed is cold. The bed is cold. <laughs> the bed is cold. The bed is cold. And speaking of, that's Angie's problem right now. She does not want to be cold in this winter cuffing season. So she's trying to find a big dude. 
it's big juice season. Big boy season. Yeah. Yes. Um <laughs> So she is on the hunt because she did not get her rotation together and you're supposed to get your rotation together in the summer. So by winter, you're ready. What was she doing? I'm confused. She said rehearsals and rehearsals. This production started like in the Yeah, fall. she wasn't so what was she, she wasn't working during she was wearing a big coat in the first episode. Yeah. You were busy on Quinn's yeah. couch. Yes. But that um, took her away from getting her lineup. So, okay. first of all, we saw a little peep of the Get Out musical. I would buy a ticket. Oh, definitely. I would, I would buy a ticket. I would buy. I don't know why she was playing. Why she was sleeping on them? Yes, I'm like this is amazing. The theatrics were in the sky. I love it. Oh, everything was great. The only problem I had was the guy as the teacup, but that's it. That's just my thing. I was like, oh. <laughs> He got hands. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but everything else was good. Yeah, yeah. So um, Angie's, you know, she's on the hunt, so she th- decides to take her castmate, who's on the hunt too. So they go hunting for the the big dudes of the city. Um, and everyone, they th- <laughs> I was cracking up when they thought they found the guy. He said, oh, I already got a man. And he was like, big dude's out of stock. Nobody told you to wait last minute, okay? <laughs> I loved it. I was cracking up. Um, and her and the castmate bond. I didn't get his name. They bond. They do karaoke. His name is Eric. 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 Yes. Eric. Okay. So her and Eric bond. They go to karaoke. That's my thing. I'm down with. The, I'm down with the whole escapade. Yeah. So he goes in. He tries to kiss her. What are you doing? I thought it was obvious. I stopped making out with gay men in college, mainly because they asked me to. <laughs> gay? No, I'm bi. What? Oh, this is news to okay. me. And suddenly she's intrigued, and then they start <laughs> making out. What would you say? I said it was news to everyone. Everybody. It was news to me. Well, I said, I said, oh. Because when we met you in the beginning of the episode, you had a man. You had a man, and you was on the hunt all night, all day for men. You wasn't on the hunt looking for men and women. You never said that. You never said that. You could have got a little big girl to keep you warm. I was really, like, agreeing. Why, why are you doing this right now? Exactly. Just like this big boy season, this big girl season. Come on. Hello. Hello to the big girl. Hello, but um, Angie. All that aside, she's into it. She's yeah. into it, and um, they're going to keep each other warm this upcoming season. Okay. <laughs> no comments. No. Mm. Mm. <laughs> all right. So, who are we get into next? Um, let's get into Ty. So she meets up with Anna. She wants to thank her for her glowing review on for on in Forbes or whatever. And you know, she was kind of scared that Anna was gonna be petty because she broke up with Anna. So she's like, now I don't know how she's gonna write about me. Yeah. But Anna is a professional. She nope. play them kind of games. Keep it separate. Yep. Yeah. And she thought she was. She thought her and Anna was still gonna be cool after she broke up with her. But Anna was like, lose my number. Don't ever contact me again. Right. Right. Absolutely. We have nothing to talk about. Bill, what do you think about Ty calling Anna with this? I mean, I thought it was nice. What I didn't like is that, well, the apology was me calling you. I didn't yes. hear, sorry. I didn't hear anything. Right. I would have said, lose my number too. And shove that fake apology somewhere else where the sun don't shine. Mm. I mean, but what's her face? Ty did say she was a fuck boy, so. Yes. And it shows. It shows. She's not. Yeah, she is. Mm. This is who she is. She doesn't really do relationships and she ends it. And like the thing I think with Anna, just like, she's want to sweep it under the rug. Like, no, you played me. Right. Don't want to take the blame for it. Well, like, own up to it. Right. So. Mm-hmm. so um, throughout the episode, she's having 
abdom abdominal pain, but she tries to like ignore it and say, oh, this is just menstrual cramps. But at the end of the episode, she passes out on the train. On the dirty subway floor, yes, she did. Oh, God. Underground, so you know how I go. Everybody's delayed. <laughs> train <Where'd> stops. <laughs> now everybody's commute is messed up. Um, thanks, Ty. Come on, Ty. I kind of have to get somewhere. But uh, thanks so much. All we need is that one person. You are done. You're not getting to your destination about three hours later. That's it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Quinn, somebody call 911. Don't you have a phone? Exactly. Is there service on the train? I was about to say, is, is there service on the train now? Is, is this there Wi-Fi? <laughs> you got to use the transit Wi-Fi. Um, you got to press that button, screen? girl. You're going to have to press the button. Now we all going to be upset. Oh, We're all going to be upset. God. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't. I cannot. Um, let's go to Quinn. <laughs> Quinn. Yeah. Now let's go to Quinn. All right, let's go to Quinn. So, um, she's at her boutique. Her mom comes in, just so shady, no care for her feelings. That um, accent. Stop it. That accent is something else. Stop, Stop it. it. I love how no one sees it for this accent. Jasmine Guy. Oh. There's nothing to see. Love it to death. Legend. I love Jasmine Guy. Of course. Yeah, she did. But she can't do it all. No. And that's okay. So she comes in with Isabella, you know, the girl that her mentor, her mom feels to be Quinn's mentor. Um, and, you know, her mom is just exposing Quinn's financial issues, being rude, just airing it all out. Business out there. Yes, like, mom. And Quinn's used to it. She doesn't even, like, flinch. She's like, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so Isabella tells Quinn about the 90s fundraiser, like, you should come, bring your boyfriend or bring your girlfriend. Was it me or was Isabella giving flirty vibes to Quinn? Yes. Okay. Yes. Agreed. Okay. Yes. Do, you really get do you have yeah. a girlfriend or do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. yeah she's Let basically me know. asking her. Yeah, she's basically asking her without asking her. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. Professional. Mm -hmm. Game, um, game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, Quinn talks about uh, Arnez. I'm, I'm calling him Arnez. <laughs> Sean Arnez. One on one. Um, so they ha she brings him. Cousin. They have an amazing time, and he talks about you know the mother of his son. There's no drama. They have a healthy relationship. You know, high school sweethearts. One time happened, end up with a baby. So mm -hmm. you know, she brings Sean to like the investors. And, you know, the corporate people, Isabella, and the action on what he does, he says he's a dancer, and Quinn just completely rewrites his life. Yes, of course. he danced at Alvin Ailey, we met at NYU, he has no kids, oh my God. And Sean, it looked like, who is this guy you describing? Because that ain't me. Yeah, that ain't right. me. If you're going to lie about my life, let me know ahead of time. Let me in on it. Let me in That's on great. it. Because honestly, I get it. No one wants to say, oh, he's a stripper. No one wants to. Because even he said, he's, I'm a dancer. He didn't say I'm a stripper. I'm a dancer. Right. Yeah. So I, huh? I said they don't use that term. They use exotic dancer. Exotic yeah. dancer. Professional exotic dancer. Professional exotic dancer. It's a career. It's a career. Um, so Quinn is embarrassed and. He's pissed, like he leaves. Cause he's like, you know, you made up a whole new person. I don't even know who Alvin Ailey is. Um, mm -hmm. You're talking about this, what's going on? If you, if this is the person you want, go get him. So she ends up, he leaves her there and she pulls up on him at the club and basically pours her heart out. You know, she doesn't like the feeling of shaming someone because of what they do, it's like what her mom does. Like she doesn't want to turn to her mom. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which was, it was nice to see, like, and then she even, like, said, like, he was a breath of fresh air. Like, she could really be herself. And, you know, that one night stand lifestyle is not her. She just wants, she wants someone love. So, like, this is the real me. You know, let me know the real you. And, you know, they have, like, a vibe. I want her and Sean to work. Me too. Me too. Me too. Sean is full Sean is it. Come on. Let me get me a Sean. Right? 
I think we all need a song. Low-key a different session. Low key, a different <laughs> session. I'm not gonna lie. What'd you say? A different <laughs> profession. His profession? Yeah, I I want the Sean, but not the Sean the dancer. Yeah, and you don't Sorry, want the dancer for Alvin Ailey. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. What about a hip hop dancer? What? What if he does backup for like J Lo? He could be like, "This is hip hop." I don't think so. <laughs> hey, this is hip hop. <laughs> no thanks. I'm so done. I can't. <laughs> We don't want it. You see how I turned my foot in? This is hip hop. This is hip hop. This is hip hop. Hip hop head, we have this. Boom, bam. Every time. Uh, uh. Or. Uh, uh. This is hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. Yes. We don't want that. No. <laughs> so, no dancer. You don't want Sean the dancer. You don't want Sean the father. You just want Sean. The Sean. Sean. Oh. Just Sean. Makes you feel in bed, bed, listens to you, supports you. That's what we mm -hmm. want. Yeah. Just do something else, bro. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's get into Camille. So Camille, you know, her and Jameson, they're going strong, but that's not her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Um, she invites him to the to be his plus to be her plus one at Ian's private tasting event. Yeah. And when they get there, Mira is fangirling because is Jameson fan. is like doing some philanthropic work. And Ian is kind of feeling away because it's bad enough his ex is here with Jameson. But now his fiance is also in this man's face smiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got and real territorial. Like, very territorial. Because they're the S men. Like, yeah. they're super territorial. So. He came in like, who's your friend? <laughs> Boy. Yeah. And he was being a creep watching them kiss like oh, don't you belong in the kitchen don't you belong in the kitchen number one don't you have a fiance right over here yes first of all mira had me weak she's gonna say i'm somewhat of an activist myself really yes i recently bought a metal straw so you're an activist yeah okay okay let's have a seat mira you i'm an activist do it too i still use paper <laughs> i'm an activist <laughs> I'm an activist. Okay. Um, so they sneak away into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And um, Ian says, well, basically, Camille tells him that he should make some changes. He should, you know, put some black art in the wall, um, really include the city in yes. the restaurant. Which I agree. I think that's very good um, advice. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and he says, like, oh, I'll pay you to make those changes. And I'm just like, sir, you're the chef. You're not the owner. Who's, who's, who said you can make these, these changes? <laughs> What's going on? I think it's good that he did that, though, because, you know, she made such a big deal that they're taking over Ray's and taking over raids and protest, protest, protest. So he's like, you talk all that talk? Help me out. Yeah. Help me out. I'm like, I don't even know you have that power, sir. You belong in the kitchen. You can change the menu. I don't know if you can change the design, but hey. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's what, uh, that's what the restaurant needs because that's what everyone's complaining about. Like, where's the culture? Where's the, the heritage of Harlem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I guess they're going to be business partners right now. So mm. that should be met. That will be messy. Very messy. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. later on, Camille and Jameson have a combo. Mm -hmm. Um. So at that point, Jameson acts basically says like. What do you say? I really did not mind the sound of girlfriend. <laughs> I didn't mind it either. Kind of liked it. So? <laughs> but you're leaving in a few months. Why are men always leaving? <laughs> ah. Not why her men always leaving. Always. Oh, I gotta go. I ain't gotta leave, but I gotta go right now. They trace songs. 
Mm-hmm. Where he got? Did he say where he's going? Like moving? I think in I think in like a few months he was going somewhere to teach or something. Okay. So he they decide to like make it like official. She agrees to be his yeah. girlfriend, the girlfriend boyfriend right now. And as soon as she signs, he'll deliver this agreement. Ian comes. Hey, you think we made a mistake? He wants to text her phone with this. I hate that text. Men do it all the time. They have senses. Spidey sense. She's happy. Let me text her. Yeah, yeah well, somebody needs to turn them spidey senses off. I hate Run that. Off. Burn it. I hate that crap. Ugh. Yes. Like, why? Why now? You didn't feel this way when we kissed on the stoop? Mm-mm. Now you see me with another man? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so fiance. Yes, fiance. We've been fiance for a while, but now that I'm happy with someone, all of a sudden, all of a sudden. So let's get into the writers' room. Let's talk about a question comes concerns real quick. Ian is a dog. <laughs> it's given dog. It's given dog. dog. It's given territorial. You want to mm. mark your territory for why? Well, why you see me happy with another man? Mm-hmm. You don't like it, but you could be fiance and moving into the brownstone. But once the men I bring an established young gentleman, you don't mm-hmm. like it. Very yeah. established. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you I'm need to cut it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want you to understand. I'm not yours anymore. Mira is yours. Yeah. But we all know Camille still wants to be his. Oh yeah. yeah. But that always happens. Yeah, and that always happens, like you girls say, when you see somebody else with, I mean, when you see your ex with somebody else, it's like, oh, but you're still mine. Even though I have her, you're still mine. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't work like that. This isn't sister wives. Need it Yeah. No. (laughs) This isn't sister wives. We're not doing that. This is sister wives. At all. No, I ain't doing it. What? Well, I do think that she's definitely going to meet up with Ian to talk about this. Yeah. Because I know deep down, she does feel they're making a mistake. You know, we know that. She tried to get back with him earlier. Um, But now they got a lot at stake. She doesn't want her Jameson. He's got a whole fiance. But she will yeah. visit this. They might do a little sneaky link. I don't know. Of course they will. They're both settling with people. Who are nice. They're good people. Hey, yeah, they're great they, people. They want to be with each other because they're still remembering the love from four years ago. Yeah. Even though they're not the same people from four years ago. Oh, yeah. A lot has changed. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So what are we thinking about? Um, well, we already said we want Sean and Quinn to make it. Long yes. Long. We want them to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, she's going to probably introduce him to her mom. Okay. Well, let's see if, if she redeems herself mm. and says the truth about who he is and his profession. Oh, she will. Um, oh, my gosh. Someone will never hear, hear the end of it. No. <laughs> but I want to see how she interacts with his son after, you know, he saw her. You know, not so ladylike with the first yeah. meeting. I want to see how she does with you know being a step mommy for you know a bit. Yeah, and what Potential. is his living situation? Does he live with his grandma, or was she just dropping him off? Oh, that's no. right. That's a good question. And will she have a problem with that? I don't know. Think about this thing. Also, Miss Isabella, I want to talk about that. Watching you, Miss Isabella. <laughs> Miss Isabella. Isabella's just creeping around the corner. She's reading. Mm, waiting for her time. But who said you was in line? You never know. You think Quinn will switch to the other team? You never know. You never know because she's friendly. She also listens to her. Who knows? You never know. It could happen. And Quinn might be like, you know, I haven't had no luck with men, so let's see. Ty, let me know what I, what do I need to do? Maybe. 
Like Isabella is the one that's friend zoned, like the good friend. And when <laughs> the girl's having problems with her boyfriend, Isabella she's just in there. <laughs> she was always there. Oh, just cry. <laughs> cry on my soul. Just show the baby girl. Oh, no, cry on my bosom. Oh, oh my baby God. Girl. <laughs> She plotting. It's about she it's happening. It's me. happening. She's got it working. I don't know if it's happening. I don't know if it's about to get her feelings hurt or not. But she plotting. She needs to keep Ty around and be like, let me know what True. she's trying to But do. if it does happen, but if it does happen, do you guys like Isabella? Because I do. I think she's cool. If it does happen. For me, it's too early to tell. Like I don't, I don't know much. I, no, she's cool. I think she's cool. But now I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe we're introducing it to Isabella that um, maybe her and Ty will get together. Oh, maybe. Maybe we're introducing them. Mm. Both Ooh. successful women. But isn't Isabella more of um? I was just about to say, because she wore a pants and suit, right? To... Ty, Ty, right? Is, Ty is open to changing her oh, ways, right. even though she has but it didn't work out for her. So she might not want to go down that road again. I know it didn't work out for her. I don't know. So I'm I don't know about this. Mm. Okay. But so I'm can... still team Sean and Quinn. We'll see how that happens. Yeah. I'm team Sean and Quinn too. Yeah. Um, so Angie. Mm. Angie. Speaking of switching teams. <laughs> Angie. Angie. She just want a body at this point because all the big boys are gone. So she needs somebody. And she found somebody. I just get worried if she falls for this guy, is he going to want to be with her? Or when he sees a great guy of his own, uh, a, great guy, a great guy that he wants, he's going to be like, sorry, I'm switching teams again. I'm going to go to, right. you know. And will like um, will Angie feel like insecure? Like, oh, were you just looking at him? Or were you looking at her? Like, how? Would oh, she... yeah, more insecure than she would if you know she's only dealing with a heterosexual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Angie seems like just a fun, go with the flow type of girl. But at the same time, she don't want to be played. She don't. She don't want to play. standing for that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. I don't know if they're going to make it the long run. I don't know if it's just a cupping season fling. But, um... I don't see it being big. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't see it being, being big. Mm -hmm. Or what if she makes the mistake of sleeping with him and then, you know, she dates someone else and he's, like, super jealous and she's like, well, pump your brakes. Oh, I thought, oh, I thought you were going to say sleeping with him and having his baby. I was going to be like, oh, God. <laughs> I was going to say sleeping with him and getting an STD. I didn't know oh, which God. way. Wow. God. Don't know. Lord. Oh. Wow, guys. We're just here for the drama. I see. Where is the writer's room, okay? We could write season This is the writer's room. We could write this season two. We got to see different routes where we want to take these characters. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And will this friends. cause friction on set if it doesn't work out? Ooh. Uh, you know, they work together still. They sure do. They sure do. Okay. The background, okay. Yeah, I can yeah, see yeah. it. Yeah. I so and I think it. his ex is on set too. Oh, really? you know, he he an actor too? Because well, I did he hear they all around on Broadway, so Yeah. There's gonna be drama in the get out, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Ty. Right. Ty, I hope she's okay. I hope she's yes. okay too. I hope she's okay. We'll start there. Um <laughs> you know, like you said before, black people don't like to go to the hospital or a doctor. Mm -hmm. Like her friends kept telling her and she's like, No, I'm not doing it. like she just felt it would pass. Like I don't know what it is kidneys, stone cramps, who knows? But I hope she's all right. And um, I feel like maybe Anna might hear about it. She ain't gonna hear about it. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I don't need to hear about it. 
But maybe this will be a wake-up call like, oh, I need to get my life together and settle down with someone. I don't know. You know when people have like Who a is life be Anna? Hi. Hi. You know, she goes to the hospital. It's like, oh, maybe I almost died. I need to settle down. Who knows? Or be more truthful. Be more truthful. <sighs> so he might call Anna again and say, listen, I almost died. So yeah. I don't care who I'm, who I'm dating. Right. <laughs> because when um, Angie and Eric were singing their karaoke number, it was like being alone on Christmas. And they panned to every couple. Everybody had somebody but Ty. She was just there in pain. So I she think was just dying. That's what that was happening. Poor Ty. I just yeah. think Ty's just, you know, she, out of all of them, they all are messes in when it comes to love, but I think Ty's like the number one for me. I just think she's, I don't know. She could get a girl quick, but she loses it even quicker. Yes. Every mm. episode. Just Every down episode. Downhill. Mm-hmm. That's why. That's why. She gets in her own way. She does. She really does. Both have a touch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, but we got three, four more episodes left of this season to get into. And I could just imagine the drama. I mean, we already have some predictions going, so, you know, it's going to be good. (laughs) It's going to be, it's going to be good, but I'm hoping my prediction of Sean and Quinn staying together happens. I don't think it's going to happen, and it never does. But... I feel like something's gonna happen. Yeah. Either his baby mom is gonna be, be like, "I want to be with you," mm-hmm. or is she huh? Ain't she married? True, but She's you, married. you never know. You you never know. Is it Ian Fiance? Yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> or something might happen, but you know, I don't know. Okay. Partners mean nothing. I mean nothing. The heart wants what the heart wants, and their heart gets it, okay? Do we like Jameson, though? We don't. Okay. I like him. Wait, what? Jameson is a creep. Oh, no. I don't think he's a creep. I really don't like how Quinn romanticized him being a stalker, and she was just like, give him a chance. Like, I was really upset that she said that to her. <laughs> he's like, where do you, where's the boundary? Where do you draw the line? I do think that was weird, but I weird. I like him. I think he's cool. I, I think he's he's definitely an ideal choice for Camille. Very smart, kind of does the same thing that she does. However, it don't matter. He's he's not Ian, and that's what she wants. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I do think he he's tall, which is nice. I do think he's tall. Um, <laughs> Plus. And that's one thing that, because we always talk about these, this show not, not being New York. Like, just seeing, like, Camille's ex and her current, it's like, where are these guys at? You <laughs> you might get one, like, fine brother, but your other exes ain't that fine. They're mm-hmm. not. they not, okay? Fine and tall and established. You got two of them? <laughs> But I mean, he uh, Jameson is cool, but yeah, he definitely is creepy as far as that mix up. She got to keep her eye out on them. But the girls loved him. Like when she brought him to the brunch or dinner, or whatever, they loved him. Yeah, well, I don't understand Angie asking questions about style when she does not get fashion. So, <laughs> them questions to yourself. <laughs> She does not get fashion. She does not. Mm -hmm. Get a fashion on this show is very questionable. Oh God! It's very much wear this. Go. Just, just go. But this doesn't matter. Just go. Just go. (laughs) It's not New York at all. Oh my God! But I like him. I think he's cool. I don't see them. I don't see them lasting though. So I'll give it another episode or two, and then. Right. He's gone. He's a placeholder for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. Out of here. Bye, Jameson. 
Bye, Jameson. <laughs> All right. Any last two CCs? Okay. No. No. All right. Well, Phil, Mr. Phil Hernandez, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> this, was fun. Yes. this was so much fun. This was fun. Um, yes. yes. So let the people know where they can follow you and maybe, you know, what you got going on, anything you want them to see. Um, you guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, at M R P H I L H E R N A N D E Z, Mr. Phil Hernandez. Um and I got I got a couple more articles coming up for the VPN and something else in the works. Again, I'm not gonna say it now because it's still too early, but it's coming and it's good and I'm ready. I can't wait. Um and yeah, thank you girls for having me. I hope to come back. Well, everyone, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Seriously Podcast. Please return to us next week. We'll be talking about episode um, seven and eight of the series. You can listen to us on all social media platforms, all podcast platforms at Seriously Podcast, and watch us on Black Oak TV on YouTube. So until next week, bye, guys. Bye. Bye.